Hello and welcome back to the Knights of the Old Republic playthrough. Uh, we have a lot to do today once again, so we are going to start the duel arena by talking to this guy. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get this duel arena done and the Sith base and get into Devic space by the end of this. That's my goal, but it's going to take no small amount of focus. Um, I don't think I'm high enough level slash have enough battle stimulants to finish the duel arena, but I do want to get started. And blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're? This is for the best. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a crewman I missed back on the Endar Spire. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. You've seen him lose night after night after night, but this time he's after fresh meat. In this corner, I give you Jedi Duncan. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Taris dueling scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name, the mysterious stranger. The duel arena is set up as a tiered a group of player or er, characters to fight. As you can see, <clears throat> the first character is incredibly easy to beat. I just one shot him. You can just pretty much beat him as soon as you. Leave. Uh, land on Terrace at level 2 or level 3 or you know whatever whatever the level is in the beginning um, and the second guy is pretty easy too and the third guy is pretty easy too but uh, once you get to the fourth guy that's when you gotta start using dumb tactics um, we'll get to that point eventually I don't think I'm gonna do them right now but I will definitely do the first three because it gets me some credits to buy this droid droidica so I can get into the Sith base Gurloin two fingers. So this guy is just as easy as Dead Eye Duncan. He may actually fall in two volleys. Oh, he's gonna live for three. He's gonna live for four. That's more than I expected. Apparently, my character is kind of garbage right now. But not to worry, that will be fixed eventually. Eventually, we'll have some super sweet power spike. Uh, when I, once I start hitting the sneak attack power level, it's going to be really great. It's really hard to sneak attack in the duel arena because it's a 1v1 scenario. And you don't really have any way to stun besides concussion grenades. What I'll see. Uh, the next person is Ice. A woman with steel on her bones and ice water in her veins. She is cold and quick as death and in the other corner. Uh, that's weird. I don't really know why I started. I've been starting pointing off to the left there. Um, we can kill Ice pretty easily. I think that our ball of stats is bigger than her ball of stats, and she doesn't really do anything special. Uh, once the combatants start pulling out swords, that's when I need to be careful. But I don't think Ice ends up doing that at all. So if we just keep volleying back and forth. I win, just like that. Easy PC. Alright, we'll go pick up the last of the credits that I achieved. <clears throat> I think it's 300 for the third battle. I think you just get progressively 100 more each time. Yep, that's right. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to just bail for now, go into the Sith base, come back when I am a little bit higher of level. Yeah, that sounds like a much better plan. All right, back onto Terrace. So we got a bit of a walk to do right now. It's kind of far away. It's actually on the opposite side 
of the upper city of Terrace, and that's kind of a pain in the butt. <sighs> um, let me think. There's something I want to do. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, we all oh, we have to go to um. It's a good thing I'm doing this. Uh, I, we have to go give the Rackle Serum to the uh, guy on the I top. I was oh. First. How did those Vulcans manage to capture a famous Jedi like you? Or were you knocked out when your escape pod crashed? No, I was conscious. But my Force powers were exhausted from using my battle meditation in the battle for the End of Spire. Without my help, you might have never gotten off the ship alive. Fair enough, but I've seen you Jedi in action. There's, there's no way those thugs could have stood a chance against your lightsaber. My lightsaber was misplaced. I couldn't find it after the crash. I looked everywhere in that part. The Vulcas came and overwhelmed me even as I was searching for my weapon. Yeah, let me get this straight. You lost your lightsaber? <laughs> I mean, isn't that a violation of some kind of Jedi code or something? Well, this is no laughing matter. During the crash, my lightsaber must have... It must have fallen from my belt and rolled under my seat. The Vulcans probably found it there when they searched the wreckage. Hey, 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 don't get mad. I'm sorry. It's just funny to think of a legendary Jedi losing her lightsaber. Take my advice. This is one detail you might want to keep out of the history texts. I hardly consider myself a legend, Carl. Though I will consider your advice when I relate these events to the Jedi Council. There is no need for them to know every detail of what transpired. Well, somebody had to say it. I approve of Karth in this situation. Like I said, I like to piss Bastila off. Uh, oh, where am I going? Gotta go to the hospital, which okay. just so happens to be right there. And to get there faster, I also forgot to use this speed boost power. There you go. Welcome back. Are you in need of healing or medical supply? You have the serum? Impossible. How did you get this? No... Wait, I don't really want to know. Can... can I see it? The serum, I mean? I need to see if there's enough for me to analyze it so I can start producing it in mass quantities. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this is it! A cure for the Rat Ghoul disease! With this sample, I can make enough serum for everyone! The people of Terrace owe you a debt they can never repay. Please, take this small reward. It isn't much, but it's all I could afford. A few credits and two spare med packs. I appreciate everything you've done. There are many who would have sold the serum to the crime lord Davik for a much higher sum. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Goodbye, and good health to you. Oh man, we just got so many light side blew points. It. You blew if it! If you had that serum to Zax, you would have made it worth your while. But no, you had to go and do the honorable thing. I guess they're they're trying to make you feel bad about your decision. Um, I don't really care. A lot of people don't like to do dark side because they feel bad or some kind of weird emotional connection to the characters that they feel bad about. You just have to think of it as a game, man. It's, if it's a game, I think of it as a min-maxing sort of thing. And a lot of people don't like to do that. They like to be immersed. But... In my opinion, if you can, you, I can immerse myself much better if uh, I feel like I'm very strong in the game and I can destroy everything. But I achieved that. The game didn't just give it to me. Anyway, we're gonna futz around this droid shop for a second. You'd think people would be a little more tolerant of others in this day and age. <laughs> Stupidity and ignorance will never go out of style. Ken Chopa Chawi Tichok Twees Yun Kun Watuyama Kama Wuna It's so stupid that they make you buy this droid if you want to be light side. There are, they, I was talking about investments before, but this one is a quality investment in a character that I am only going to use once. Um, so we'll take off Bastila for now. We'll put her back into the party. You literally only need to use this droid to get into the Sith base, so I guess I'll level him up. Droids 
uh, droids have are, are only useful for one thing, and it's the um, the droid powers I was talking about, where they have flamethrowers and cryo band stuff. But this T3 droid specializes in gearhead and skills and caution and all these feats that are so pointless because they focus all on skills and stuff like that. So we really just... I, I really shouldn't be caring about this, but it's totally against my baser nature to auto-level up anybody like I did when I was a kid and didn't care at all. See, he has caution. Ugh. Just makes me feel bad for a man. Improved caution and improved gearhead. I don't. I don't even know what to pick. All of these choices are bad. Let's just go with this one. That is the least bad of all of them. Okay, finally got that over with. We'll uh, equip him with some stuff, I guess. Maybe he. I don't think he even has two weapon fighting. He has to fight with uh, one pistol. Um. What am I doing? I don't even need to fight with him. I, I literally... Okay, I guess he teleported over here. That was really strange. Uh, he's going to fly in from the bridge. We'll wait for him right there. But yeah, I'm not even going to use him. I don't know what I... I it's Again, it's old habit. If I get a new character in a party, i got to make sure that they are uh, equipped at least a little bit. Comes from playing Valkyrie Profile too much. Where if you leave a character, it just... <laughs> You're, it's gonna come back and bite you in the butt later on if you leave them like unequipped and underleveled. And the Sith base is across this hugely long and magnificent bridge. Where is T3? Oh my gosh, he got stuck on a wall. Uh, I guess we're gonna have a conversation with Karth now. What does it matter that much? Why can't you just leave it be? I just don't trust easily. And for good reasons, which are my own. Oh, damn it. I suppose I won't get any rest until I talk. Well, I... You want to know why I don't trust anyone? Fine. Here goes. Five years ago, the Jedi had just finished the war with the Mandalorians. Revan and Malak were heroes. I was damn proud of something. It was completely unexpected when they turned on us, invading the Republic, while we were still weak, nobody knew what to think. At least it wasn't me. Our heroes had become brutal, conquering Sith. And we were all but helpless before. I mean, think about it. If you can't even trust the best of the Jedi, who can you trust? Of course the Jedi turned to the dark side. There were others, however, who weren't Jedi. Good men, trusted men, who joined them. Malak and Revan and the Sith deserve to die for what they but the ones who fled the Republic and joined them are even worse. The dark side has nothing to do with why they joined with the Sith. They deserve no mercy. I know. I know. And I should apologize to you. I've, I've become so accustomed to expecting the worst in others, and you've done nothing to deserve that. It's just... No, never mind. Let's just continue with what we were doing. I really want to talk about it. You know, there are times when Karth acts like more of a moody teenager than Mission does. And she's supposed to be 14. I have no idea how old Karth is supposed to be. Maybe 30s? Because he's seen, quote, a lot of combat, he quote. It's okay, we can just deal. Keep Karth with me to, uh... Further the theme of blaster pistols only. Uh, hold on one moment. There we go. I am all set up there. Okay, cool. Uh, got a little message around but nothing too pressing. Uh, return to the hideout here for a full heal, and then I'll head back, and then I'll use T3 to open the base, and then I'll move him out of the party, and then we can actually do this dungeon. There we go. Easy peasy. Sweet. Now we got to pull T3 out. Party selection right here. Boop. See a T3. Never use you again. And we'll take Basila with us, I guess. Uh, lightsaber is useful. I, I could also take Mission. I'll probably end up doing that later. Kavadumpa kapalia monapata. Kipuna nabon Kakin 
Mana Manatota Hakuchi Krala Boleji Chok Bonana Kachu Kicha Badwang Wanga Kum Kiba Welcome to the Sith base. The uh, guards that she calls into the room, I can just open a door and kill them all anyway. But that would not be the light side way to do it. Or would it be? I guess they're all right here. <clears throat> so, and the Sith soldiers in this area are the first people to actually chuck grenades at you, as you just saw. And grenades are fairly dangerous, I guess I'd like to say. So you gotta be careful to split your party up correctly, and if you do see a grenade coming, you can preempt the med pack usually at times because the combat rotations are on three second intervals. So if you do an attack, you won't do anything else for another three seconds afterwards. Um, and but grenades take 1.5-ish of maybe two of those seconds to land and explode. Um, I got that data pad. I don't know if it's useful to read or not. Nope, I guess not. <clears throat> uh, I guess this isn't even the place where you read it. There's the Beck data pad. I think KOTOR 2 just had a better way of reading things than this game did. Because I don't remember reading much of anything yes. in this game other than that sure. um, weird puzzle we did earlier. Okay. We should proceed with the Sith base this direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm uh, here. What? Gave Bastila the cure spell, but uh, early on the cure spell kind of isn't that good. Uh, when I played this game as a kid, I thought the cure spell was the greatest thing ever because you didn't need to use med packs. You could just wait for the force powers to recharge the mana in this game. That's what has some force powers. Unless you have like a lot of light side points and you have a fairly high level, cure takes, you know, you can only do three of them and that will maybe put one of your characters to full health. But further on, cure heals poison, which is really nice. There's not too much poison in this game, but like all status effects, it is very obnoxious to deal with when you do have it, which is why I preemptively buy antidotes obsessively from that idea guy down at the bottom. <clears throat> Droids in here, I could equip uh, ion pistols and whatever, but it's not going to be needed quite yet. I might equip it. There's like a boss fight before the boss fight, a, a, a preemptory boss fight, you know? Games have that all the time, but there is a droid and a couple of blaster turrets we're gonna have to take down. Might equip Ion. Oh, actually, I will almost certainly forget to do that, because that is my mo: <clears throat> to forget to equip Ion pistols. I wouldn't be me if they kept doing that. Mm. Now I was talking about uh, empathy and caution earlier, and how bad those were because they focus on skills. A lot of people would say that Persuade is a very good skill for your main character to have because nobody else can use it. Um, and to that I say, Bullocks! Oh, this is just some puzzle. We can, like, unlock him from the wall. It's actually the easiest thing ever. You only need to do two buttons. Anyway, I say bullocks to those Persuade users because uh, maybe, you know, if the first time you play the game you're using Persuade to do things, uh, then it's going to, actually, it's going to end up being three buttons. You can turn them on and kill them and you get dark side points. It's kind of interesting. Um, okay, I lost my train of thought entirely. Uh, oh, Persuade. Yes, so if the first time you play the game you want to use Persuade to sort of cheat your way through conversations, then yeah, sure, go ahead. Pump all your points into Persuade. Skills don't really matter anyway, I guess, but really, in the scheme of things, I would rather have, like, um, the first aid skill for the med pack usage and um, even, like, demolitions sure. or something stupid like that rather than any points in Persuade, just because it's so useless. And then just to waste a feat, increasing the amount of Persuade you get, that is, uh, what can I do? that's T-Rubble right there. That's that's not something you want to be doing. 
kind of ran into that mine stupidly there. Oh, Basilea has been stunned. Uh, for some reason, I have never had success just using the base stun horsepower for light side users. And I don't know why. It, it might just have like a horrible chance to hit or the save roll to save the stun is really low or something like that. <clears throat> Who am I to know what numbers Bioware put into their game? Uh, this direction looks like a backtrack. There's a broken droid in there that won't be using. Uh, this is a cool little room. It looks kind of like a Death Star. <laughs> I'm sure they did that on purpose. Sweet. Oh, this room. There's a lot of people in here. Uh, hopefully I don't die here. Because i kind of just been willy-nilly walking through. Oh, I just got plasma grenaded. Oh boy. Okay. Well, one of them's taken down. That's what's going to do all right. Oh, they plasma grenaded me again. The guy in the back is just throwing grenades. That uh, Sith captain. Oh, okay. that guy's on fire. There's a there is a stun ability called on fire. Um, I don't know if you get sneak attack if you attack somebody who's on fire. Uh, this is starting to get a little bit hairy. Oh my goodness. Punch me, attack me. Okay, Vassal is down. We are still at one hit point. Okay, he used the med pack. My character is going to head up. Let's see if Karth can do his power blast thing. Sweet. Easy. All right. Maybe I'll learn my lesson next time and not just randomly pounce into a room. Vassal, I got to level up. Awareness. Kind of lame. Normally, sometimes in RPGs, like a skill like awareness is really useful. Uh, force power for Bastila. She's, once again, kind of low level to be getting force powers, so it's hard to choose something, so you kind of have to throw away a point. I want to give her stasis, but she's not high enough level for stasis, so I probably do the next level of something that I can get, shield or whatever. Cool. Shield isn't terrible. It raises your defense, which, if you can keep that up, great. Good for you. Early on, though, you kind of like use all your force powers in the beginning of a fight and forget about them for later. Um, I think there might be a key code or something on the Sith Captain. Maybe not. I don't know. I should probably heal. Nah, I'll save. What is in this room? Karth, Ready. security? Can you security through this door? Probably not. Oh, yeah. nope. We'll just break the door down. See, security is... The reason why security is fairly useless is because in almost every situation where you could use security, you can also break the door down. So then, why why would you ever need security in the first place? It's just a redundant step. It does the same thing that something else does. Okay, we're gonna wait for Basil to hit that mine. Maybe not. Okay. Well, now she walks forward. <sighs> Funny how that works. AI will auto heal you if you hit a threshold, which you saw Basil doing right there. Um, Usually it's too low of a, or too high of a threshold for my taste. She just like blows mana, trying to heal you and whatnot. But I'm too lazy to go into like the scripts and change it. From a game design element, like putting scripts into a game Bastard, to tell you, you what the, think they about do is just not. It's not fun. It's not in my opinion. It was nearly five years ago. I was still an apprentice. Hadn't even manifested itself. Yet even then, I had the wisdom to obey the will of the council. Unlike Revan. I guess. Still, do you ever wonder if things could have been different? I mean, would Revan and Malak still have been corrupted if the council had supported them instead of dragging its feet? Do not blame Revan's corruption on the council. Your Republic saw only the threat of the Mandalorians, but the wisdom of the Masters saw beyond the immediate threat. There was something lurking out there. Something that devoured Revan and Malak, and many other Jedi. Had the Council sent us all into the unknown, how many more would have fallen? So you're saying we should have done nothing? Just let the Mandalorians conquer us unopposed? I mean, the Republic was under attack, and the Order abandoned us. We did not abandon you. But the Council were not about to throw lives away foolishly. In time, we would have aided you against the Mandalorians. But you couldn't wait. Revan and Malak offered a quicker answer. And the Republic chose to walk the easy path rather than the path of wisdom. Now we see the results all around us. You asked me if I think things could have been different. I know they could have. If Revan had only listened to the Council, millions of innocent people would still be alive. Yeah, right. And every single one of them would have been speaking Mandalorian. I, I think we're done here. 
Let's just get back. Well, Karth, that was kind of a strange time to bring up a political discussion with Basla. We're kind of in the middle of a Sith base infiltration right now, buddy. Maybe you can keep your thoughts to yourself for a little bit longer, at least until we're back out on the street. But no, maybe not. This personality prevents him from doing that. All right, we are approaching the end of this mission. Down this hallway is that droid that I mentioned earlier. Um, <clears throat> we'll go into this room first, though, because there are soldiers in kill. Oh my gosh, they're throwing grenades, gotta run. Got hit by one of them, almost dodged it. Bastel is almost dead. She might get a heal off. Should sure like uh, she, she not heal? I thought I clicked the heal button. Okay. Well, she paid the ultimate price for that. Karth is now stunned. And that guy has a shock stick. Oh, there's like only one Volker that I've that before. You can equip the shock stick on your characters, but man, it doesn't do any damage. All it does is stun. Which I guess is fine. It's just not a strategy that's cool. Uh, for some reason, I can't click on that guy. So I'll heal instead. And move this direction, and oh, he threw a grenade at me. Oh, he threw a concussion grenade. I got stunned. The stun effect in this game is obnoxious, but um, it's clear. It's very clear that you're being stunned. I'm not really concerned that he's going to kill me, because I told you, shock stick does no damage. Oh, yeah, they use med packs, too, if you don't kill them fast enough. How irritating. Okay, with that guy down, I should be able to take out the rest of these guys with just my character. Pew pew. Aggroing one at a time. You learn that skill when you play a lot of MMOs. I didn't play that many MMOs. I played uh, uh, World of Warcraft, not hardcore or anything like that. I played Guild Wars 1 and 2. And um, a buttload of RuneScape. Oh my goodness, lots of RuneScape. It's hard to aggro mobs in RuneScape unless you are uh, a member and you have done uh, the, dragon, uh, the dragon farming with the iron dragons and the bronze dragons and whatnot. They're always in areas that are really obnoxious. And the Slayer is really annoying. And Every time I describe RuneScape, I, I can't think of any other word but annoying, but I still played it. That's how crazy of a game that is. <laughs> Okay, am I going to do this yet? I don't think so. Before I go into the next yes. room, gonna want to put some healing down. Can't be lazy here. <sighs> Bastila kind of has no mana or anything like that, but we have med Ready. packs, I guess. Should be totally fine. Okay, sure. let's head into the next room after that save point. <laughs> here we go. Oh, it's a big bad boy droid. All right. Don't want to step into that room because that will put me into firing range of the turret. Uh, we'll try and use all of our energy shields like that, sure. and then just try and get this guy's shield down. <coughs> oh, excuse me. As you can see it just absorbs damage. Karth has been hitting, and I've been hitting. And Vassal is really not that good of a combat character right now because all of our points are in next area. Uh. Hey, I will use force powers on immune, uh, force immune things, like, for example, droids can't be stunned unless you use the stun droid power. If you try and just use Dasis or stun on a droid, it won't do anything. So, I'll say, immune to stun. You can make your character immune to stun with implants you know, or visors or stuff like that. Hmm, am I going to be able to win this? I am totally getting rocked right now. Move back here to get rid of the prospect of getting hit by those turrets in the back there. So they're not firing at me anymore. Hopefully Karth can dodge. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to throw grenades. <laughs> Hopefully this gets his shield down. If I can get his shield down, okay, we're good. Ion grenade is really strong. Oh, I forgot to equip the ion pistol. Of course, I told you I was going to do that. <laughs> well, I missed most of the grenades, but this last one should do the trick. Great. Okay, good. No problem. I'll walk in here and heal first to, before I take out those two uh, blaster turrets in the other room that are preventing my party members from waking up. If I can hit them. Oh, come on, character. Stop blasting the wall, man. I still have that energy shield up, which is quite frankly amazing. 
Apparently the Sith energy shield is very strong. I may have used my last charge of it, or second to last charge of it, so far. Uh, they're not really that rare, but pretty easy to get Sith energy shields. Alright, I hope I don't mess this up and somehow end up dying at the plasma tree. Okay. Stuff like that has happened to me before. The transformer here, you can use it to probably computer spikes to overload the conduit. Okay, so uh, up that elevator is uh, Dark Sith, so what I'm going to do is run out of here, then pick, uh, go go full heal at the base and then come back, rather than just using a bunch of med packs for that. Um, that door behind me was locked, apparently, because it said in the last cutscene, but you can just walk out of it if you kill the droid. <laughs> Here we go, hooray for abusing game mechanics. It, it was always confusing to me that the symbol for the map was an N and not an M, but it's apparently an arrow pointing north, like a compass arrow. Uh, I don't, I, I do? still don't see that at all. I think that icon is really lame and stupid. Although I, I really like the UI in this game, just the color scheme and the buttons, and the the text is legible, at least. Um, I, I do have complaints with how to read data pads, but the rest of it's pretty easy. Like the level up sequence, it's like doing TurboTax. It's so simple and brain dead. Other games don't do that. They make the level up sequence just impossible, like Pillars of Eternity. It's so hard to tell what's yes. going on. Somehow, I guess I got stuck back here. Pillars is a game that irritated me, and everyone said it was great. I really didn't like that game at all. All right, there is a Dark Jedi up here, so I'm gonna preemptively do things like add battle stimulants, buff up my guy. Who dares to break my meditation? Who would have thought a Force Adept could be found on this insignificant planet? Spoken like a true drone of the Jedi Council. This meeting is a stroke of luck for me. And here we have the first real Jedi Sith character you'll fight in the game. Um, don't think he drops a lightsaber even though you do kill him with one. It's a three-on-one battle, so our fight is going to be hopefully pretty short. Uh, what? It's possible to die to this guy if he gets a lucky crit. He's using the crit ability. Oh yeah, he doesn't have a lightsaber. I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking. <sighs> I totally wasn't paying attention to that during that dialogue because I uh, just skipped through it. <laughs> that was my bad accident. Sometimes I skip dialogue just because uh, I've seen it so many times. It's another force of habit for me. Okay, my character leveled up. Dexterity, of course, to hit more often, and that will help in the arena. This is basically what I was looking for: is this level up beats uh, the second or uh, the third two up in fight. Um, that is going to definitely increase my chances of doing well in the end. It's actually pretty big. It's really just one level. Um, now there's strategies on Terrace <clears throat> where people want to have more force powers at the end of the game. And you there's a level cap in this game of 20. Yes. Uh, level cap of 20 means that... The longer that you are not a Jedi and you level up, the less force powers you get. So if you leave Terrace at level 12, that means you get eight levels of force powers, uh, which is eight force powers, which you can increase the number of force powers you get if you leave Terrace at level eight, I guess. You would get four more in that case. And it's possible, and I don't think it's possible on difficult difficulty, but you can do it, make it so that you get off of Terrace at level 2, or you just don't level up at all during the entire Terrace sequence. You probably won't beat Bendak if you do that. You won't do a lot of things. Uh, but you will gain experience. You'll retro retroactively gain experience. Like Just because you haven't leveled up doesn't mean that you capped the amount of experience that you can get. Uh, we need to head back down into Javier's Cantina, which is uh, in the lower city, so we'll head back down. Anyway, my target level was 7 or 8. I can't remember. Um, but I think I've hit it right now, so if I do hit it, do get another level up, I definitely am going to um, 
Uh, lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. I got a little message. Um, I have no idea what I was talking about. Holy smokes, what happened? Do I need more coffee or something? Oh, oh I guess we'll talk to Karth. Yes, Let me think. I thought I said I don't want to talk about not particularly. I, I guess it wouldn't hurt exactly either, though I, I, I don't know why you're so interested. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respect the most. Saul. You don't. I thought everyone did. But Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier. And I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. And I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. Yeah, but even when things looked to be at the worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. And actually, the plan is to go back to the cantina, and the fastest way for me to do that would be to teleport all the way back. Uh, do I need to buy anything from this guy? I kind of want another battle simulant, but I don't think he sells it yet. He doesn't sell any battle simulants. We're gonna have to go to Kebla Yurt's shop to get the battle stimulant I want for the third time. It's okay, she's a pretty cool, pretty cool guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Well, let's see your wares. Do you have the battle stimulant that I want? Beep, 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 beep. No, oh, she doesn't. Okay, I guess then I'll just buy a couple med packs. Hopefully that's good enough. This is pretty YOLO. I have never actually done the duel arena with only blaster pistols because usually I use the Ichani Ritual Brand, which is like a total buttload of damage for the Terra sequence. What? Um, but we'll see how this goes. Um, the next duel arena fight is against Marl, and he pulls out a sword, so we gotta be ready for him. I might have to do something really dumb, because Marl has some really ridiculously high crit rate power strike thing. Really Let me bend back this morning. Like a veteran who still knows how to show the young kids, but there's always some young gun coming up to not... Okay, aimlessly pointing off to the left once more. Let's use up a uh, mine. Because he's going to run directly into it. So, one damage. Great. And now we'll just run around like a chicken with a wild goose chase, head cut off, whatever, all those phrases. They all go together. And maybe now I'll hit him. He did start off at half health, which is nice. It's probably the only time we'll use a mine in this game. Come on. Cool. That is the two weapon fighting. I think if I didn't have the second level or the third level of two weapon fighting, I don't think I would have been able to hit him there like I did. 
Lovely. We'll save. We'll get the credits. And, um, uh, we gotta kill the rodent man. Twitch, or whatever his name is. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats and stay back from the edges of the ring. He's wild, he's unpredictable, he's borderline psychotic, and he's the best damn duelist in what Twitch's opponent can this for. This one is probably going to go in much the same way, although he does use a blaster in the beginning rather than just charging directly into your face. Um, I have Bridget's armband equipped, and I, yes, I was out of energy shield, so I'll equip that again and use that so that he doesn't instantaneously kill me. So let's go for his head, see if we can't just outball of stats him. Uh, miss, doing a lot of missing. Uh, rapid shot probably might not be the best choice. Uh, maybe. We're going to the yellow strat. Second, second use of energy shield. I am losing, and maybe if I get a med pack off, he will, he will kill me. Go, go, character. Lane Lannison is his name. Lane. Like Lois Lane, but a guy and also not in Superman. Cool, awesome. It's really just the melee characters that are uh, hard to beat because of their power strike. All right, let's go collect the winnings of that match. It's no paltry amount. Um, the next thing I gotta do is go find Bendak who stands in the front of the shop or the cantina area and then he will challenge me to a death duel. And the entire purpose of me doing this, because I will get dark side points if you do a death duel, is so that I get his blast. Because it's very good. It will take some time to arrange, so no point sticking around here until then. I'll be back when it's time for you to die. So Bendak will only fight in a death match. We need to go have the hut guy go set up the death match. Then return later and fight Bendak. Yeah, I gotta return later, gotta return later. Uh, let's just go outside to maybe Kebla Yard shop, see if she yes. has any things that we can buy that would be good for us to have in a 1v1 duel against Bendak Starkiller. It sounds like a Je Jeopardy category. <laughs> what are things you can buy against Bendak for 400? <laughs> Miss Kebler, let us, let us speak. Hey, you Okay, um, mines might be okay. Let's do some mines. Although I think that Bendak just throws grenades at you if you just set up mines. He never really actually runs at you. Might just be a wasted amount of purchase, but not to worry, we have plenty of credits and we will get plenty of credits through the course of this game. No problemo. So some time has passed. We can head right back into the area and get in touch with Mr. About, uh, uh, Jabba the Hutt guy. And start the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Paralegal, in this corner, a living legend. A man whose very name would make his opponent shake in their boots. If any of them were still alive! <laughs> and who would be crazy enough to step into the ring with such a lethal legend? Who? Lady! And now... Boom! There's the dark side points we're gonna have to take. Let us commence this fight. Okay, so he throws a grenade, I throw a grenade. That's how this is gonna work. Um, and then maybe I can dodge one of his grenades. And I want to be able to make sure that I use my really strong one. The poison grenade's pretty good. Uh, run over here. Use a med pack. Hopefully that one misses. Okay, good. 
he missed his power shot, so already starting well. well. My grenades didn't really do that much damage to him, so I'll just keep trying. And if I get a stun off like that, I think I can sneak attack him and instantly destroy him. Oh, nope, never mind. I thought he was stunned for some reason. It didn't show. <laughs> I, <laughs> that effect is so strange. I think it, like, it's like a snare, not a stun. About the same thing. If I just keep throwing grenades at him. Oh, okay, here we go. This is a, a crit stun. A uh, sneak attack works against opponents who are stunned like that. Which is why when I get Jedi, I'm going to be Consular and go for Stasis. It's over. It's over. The fight is over. I'd fight a lot better than I thought. Turns out that grenades are just a really strong clutch to have. And the first course of action is to equip Bendax Blaster. Where is it? There it is. And on the offhand, we will put Karth's Blaster. Two upgradable blasters. I'll try and put hair triggers and scopes and all that other stuff on top of them. Uh, looking through its stats. Yeah, it's pretty good. I did a little bit of research on it beforehand. At least I knew I had to go for that. Okay. I think that may be the last course of action that I have to do on Terrace. Um, don't want to go back to the Undercity and do that Promised Land quest. Um, yeah, that's it. I guess I could. Oh. Right into the wall there. We need to head to the lower city, to Javier's Cantina, to talk to Candorus. Um, and when that point happens, I think there's going to be just an absolute boatload of cutscenes. So the remainder of this episode might actually be a bunch of cutscenes. Oh wait, something got stuck. We stuck Karth. Where is he? Where did he go? Oh, there he is. He's running towards us as fast as his legs can carry him. Here he comes. Uh, I hate it when that happens, but it's just a problem with the AI, of course. Pathing is difficult to do at the best of times. And it just so happens the Undercity is far away. Yeah. What are these people doing? Get out of here, you goggle-eyed freak! You're too ugly for the upper city. Yeah, go back to where you came from. We don't want your kind up here. Why do you care what happens to some scummy alien? He's just a freak. Yeah, he isn't even supposed to be in the upper city. Come on, let's go. I don't want to listen to this alien lover anymore. <laughs> Weird, I must have just forgotten to do that in uh, encounter. Or maybe it spawns after you come back from the lower city. I don't know. Who knows? It's not that important. I think it only gives you one or two light side points. I don't think that's that much of a big deal. Terrace is supposed to be some racist city or whatnot. But honestly, everywhere is racist. Terrace isn't the only exception. Head back down into the cantina where Candorus is waiting for us. Um, so, like I said, definitely going to be a super long cutscene. So, hold on to your britches during this cutscene. Where is Mr. Candorus? I figured you'd be better. Oh, there he is. Neither of us okay. is getting off this planet unless we work together. Now, I know the Sith military base had a break-in, and I know it was you. I know you've got those departure codes I need, so what do you say? We join forces, and I can get you inside Davik's base, and right to the Ebon Hawk. We can go right now. Davik's always looking to recruit new talent. I'll tell him how you won that swoop race. Mention that you're interested in working for the exchange. I'll say I brought you in so he could check you out. 
He'll have you stay at his estate for a couple of days while he runs some background checks on you. That's standard procedure. This is too risky. We should find another way. You got another plan, sister? Or are you just objecting because you didn't think of it? No, I don't have another plan. I would rather not place my life in your hands, however. I can say the same about you. That makes us even. Fortunately, we both want to get off this rock, right? While Davik's checking you out, we steal the Ebon Hawk and escape Taurus. Come on. I've got an airspeeder nearby to take us to Davik's estate. The sooner we're off Taurus, the better. summon me, Lord Malak. The search for Bastila is taking too long. We cannot risk her escaping Taras. Destroy the entire planet. The, the entire planet, Lord Malak? But there are billions of people on Taras. We'd be slaughtering countless innocent civilians, not to mention our own men still on the surface. Your predecessor once made the mistake of questioning my orders, Admiral. Surely you are not so foolish as to make the same mistake. Of... of course not, my Lord Malik. I will do as you command, but it will take several hours to position our fleet. Then I suggest you begin immediately. You are dismissed, Admiral. Yes, Lord Man. So, Candorus, I see you've brought someone with you. Most intriguing, if I do say so myself. You usually travel alone. It's not like you to take on partners, Candorus. You're getting soft. Watch yourself, Gallo. You may be the newest cat hound in the pack. But you aren't top dog yet. Enough. I won't have my top two men killing each other. That's not good business. I'm sure Candorus has an explanation as to why he's not working solo anymore. This is a special case, Davak. I ran into someone the Exchange might want to recruit. You may have heard something of their exploits already. Ah, yes. Now I recognize your companion. The rider who won the big swoop race. Very impressive, as was your display in the rather heated battle afterwards. You know, Candorus was right. The Exchange is always looking for new talent. You could have a bright future with our organization. With the recommendation from Candorus, and a thorough background check, you could become part of the Exchange. Many would kill to prove themselves worthy of this honor. Come with me. I will give you a tour of my operations. I'm certain you'll be most impressed. Ah, there she is. The Ebonhawk. My pride and joy. The fastest ship in the Outer Rim. Note the state-of-the-art security system I've had installed to protect her. The shields are completely impregnable. Nobody can get past them without the codes to try and steal my baby. Unfortunately, the Sith military blockade has grounded my vessel. The Ebonhawk can outrun any vessel in the galaxy. But even she isn't fast enough to avoid the auto-targeting laser cannons of the orbiting Sith fleet. I am, of course, working on acquiring the Sith departure codes so that I may come and go as I please. However, progress has been slow. But we should continue our tour. These'll be your accommodations. The slave quarters are just down the hall. If you need anything during your stay, food, a massage, feel free to call upon their services. 
If all goes well with your background check, you will be invited to join the exchange. I'd advise you to accept the offer when it comes, or suffer the dire consequences of refusal. You will stay in these rooms as my guest for the next few days. I must warn you that if you are found anywhere outside the guest wing during your stay, or if you bother my other guests, my security forces will deal with you most harshly. I will return after the investigation into your background is complete. Until then, make yourself comfortable. Come, Callow. Let us leave our guests in peace. Okay, we're inside. Now all we have to do is figure out a way to get past the Ebon Hawk's security system, and we can get the rest of your group off this planet. No sense waiting around here, though. The sooner we get off Taurus, the better. And finally! Oh, we're back. We can level up Candorus. He is the quintessential dark side character of your group, because he's a Mandalorian, and his uh, special weapons uh, affiliation is heavy weapons, so he likes big, heavy ugly looking blaster rifles um he has power shot and stuff like that candorus really isn't that amazing you can keep i can keep him with me i probably won't though because since i'm light side character if i bring him with me everywhere i go he's just gonna get catty and disagree with everything that i do which happens way more often in kotor 2 than kotor 1 mission also leveled up easy nothing related and uh okay finish equipping things that's uh Karth's old armor, and then once this happens, I think that's going to be the end of the episode, and once more, this was the longest episode yet. Oh, my goodness. This one, this one put a kind of a strain on me, man. This is, it's hard to talk for this much long time. I really like that cutscene, because I didn't have to talk during it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to finish putting energy shields on Candorus. Um, uh, so next time, we'll head through Davik's base and get off Terrace. And hopefully that's the last we'll ever see of this place, because it's really not that amazing. There are much better places. <laughs> equip, equip, equip. I think we're all good here. Awesome. All right, that's it. See you next time.